biggest, biggest employers of anthropologists is Microsoft. Broadly speaking, the word anthropos has to do with human. But I see anthropology in the socio-cultural anthropology, which is sometimes in the UK called social anthropology. In the US, they predominantly call it cultural or socio-cultural anthropology. And uh, I think that's the variety that both of us try to practice in different domains. Um, is a study of difference within human cultures. So it is not the study of human human beings as a universal condition. So it, it understands the hum, human condition as something that has differences and those differences are, are formulative and are generative in generating, in rendering different ways of being human and, collect, and living collectively in a society, in a community, in a group um, differently on different terms with different moralities different cultures, different kinds of arts and aesthetics, music, etc., food habits, um, and also primarily and importantly, different kinds of politics. So, um, so we, we should not, in, in within anthropology, generally anthropologists will never assume that because they've uh, understood one society, that the next society who live in the next village or the village after is the same. They will never assume that. Right. So, difference is a key element with which to understand human society within, I would say, broadly what is called social or cultural and Find a way to ground yourself even if you're not, even if you turn to engineering or medicine or something more scientific or you turn to law, you turn to commerce, whatever it is. Um, Try to find a way to ground yourself in, uh, you know, philosophy and to, 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 you know, to just read philosophy, to read some of the social sciences to begin with. Uh, anthropology is a subject to my mind that uh, you actually do better in if you've got some world experience, a little yeah. bit of world experience. Um, I would say definitely take on social sciences subjects in your plus two choice of disciplines so um anything like sociology uh, i don't know if anthropology is offered in the plus two levels in most indian um uh, educate these days it is in our days it wasn't um so um sociology history political science these are all useful subjects to get um i would also advise um, young people to uh, to retain something like basic mathematical skills so that um, w further on if you're doing work like the kind of work Gayatri is doing or the kind of work some um, you know these days even Google and Facebook are also um, uh, employing anthropologists and but they usually want you to have some statistical analytical skills alongside Right. So, in order to keep those options open, it, it is good to also, or, or, uh, alongside, keep some form of mathematical training going uh, so that you have some basic statistical literacy, if nothing else. And um, and then you can go on to get B, a BA degree in whatever else, whatever you want from, from that pick, you know, history, political science, sociology, whatever, um, and, and an MA particularly in India, in sociology, in say, um, a good school would be like the Delhi School of Economics and Sociology in DU is a very good department, very reputed department of sociology that also teaches us a, a, a combination of sociology and socio social anthropology uh, would stand you in good stead to pursue such a career. In near Agra, where you are, um, Gayatri, now in Vrindavan, in the Braj region, um, a typical day would involve visits to some shrines, talking to some priests or some devotees, some um, some people who are mendicants on the streets, um, going to the ghats of Vrindavan, a lot of walking, a lot of um, some phone notes, some quick uh, notepad notes and coming back at night and writing 
uh, for at least about 40 45 minutes the the happenings of the day and the observations of the day um and often it means that sometimes i carry around a camera sometimes i carry around a voice recorder sometimes none of those um but yeah those combinations of these elements i think would constitute a typical day uh, uh, your appearance your the way you speak um uh your your involvement in your phone versus something even as simple as i mean i just i'll just give this example because i i love it so much and it was just such a huge learning moment for me uh in arunachal uh, with the tribe that i was you know studying i actually found that um, i mean i would sit in the afternoons and sit with a copy of uh, atre you would appreciate this um the art of not being governed sitting like just just the art of not being governed by james scott uh sitting with that and with a notebook and making notes and i suddenly noticed after a week i noticed that so I, i was living in somebody's house that nobody would walk into the living room area while i was sitting there by the door making my notes and when i inquired after that this the, the response was nay aap padhai kijiye you study So I learned two things there. One was the fact that I was sitting and studying. I was a woman and sitting and studying. So you know, doing things like pulling out a notepad and writing. Uh that was an important gesture for them and that was something that they aspired to. That there were people who aspired to, but it also cut me off. It cut me off. So the thing that Athri mentioned with the phone, you know, uh, there are certain what we uh what I call didactic interventions you know we use things like phones um books uh, notebooks etc to draw our attention with the, our our relationship with that object is completely engrossing because we're learning something we're gleaning information and then there's just that relationship with that object and it cuts us off from the people that we're where you know we're living with or we're trying to observe um i think this democratization and a certain kind of decolonial move within anthropology has has increasingly gained consensus and ground um to to use um to not blindly rely on western philosophy to explain certain kind of very um homegrown historically specific problems and themes um so that kind of theoretical move um as an academic anthropology those are the things that i think about the most and um those are the kinds of moves that are becoming increasingly popular uh, i think the the making of an anthropological commercial profession as gayatri rightly pointed out uh is probably a, a very exciting uh, development in the field um the cross fertilization between ap- academic and ap- applied anthropology i hope will happen that the two sides will learn from each other and inform each other's work um and lastly i think um this this kind of anthropological um research being expressed in different formats like film like photography um some people are writing fiction ethnographic fiction and poetry of which i've written some um and these are ways in which uh, ethnography is beginning to get expressed so it's becoming more of a um popular genre with that people might be interested to read in a magazine on a plane rather than off the shelves of a very high falutin looking library um and yeah what is what is really useful on the one hand uh it's important to question uh, western methods uh they don't always work by the way if you're if you're listening to this talk one great example aside from atre of course one great example of an indian anthropologist studying her own context is dolly kikon who is at the i think she's at the university of sydney melbourne of melbourne i think melbourne yeah. melbourne yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, she uh, she and she actively questions this uh, at a regular in a, in a in a very sustained manner she questions this idea that you have to come from the outside to be able to study something uh, and so that's that's a great inspiration for me because then i can say you know i i i've had the courage to then say 
uh, I don't belong as much in the field and you know you don't should send someone expensive like me to do ice breaking for long periods of time in the field when you could actually generate income at and and provide uh, training uh, at a field level uh, to uh, community based researchers um if that model works uh and if we are able to in the next uh, and when i say we i mean uh, not just organizations like anthropy and you know a few others that i i know exist and do anthropological research one way or the other but uh, also people like atre and uh, dolly etc um if 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 as a collective we are able to show to people that actually demo, democratizing the process of data collection is a is a really valuable um uh, it, it, it it not it not only you know reduces costs but it actually increases value and impact over a period of time because you're impacting the researcher's life as well uh if we're able to do that in a convincing manner then uh then applied anthropology at least has has you know uh, should uh, should have a bright future in the next 10 years